Hey everyone, Josh from ThroughMyLens.com. Today we're in Billings, Montana. I'm gonna show you 15 things to do here. Billings, Montana is the largest city in the state and it has a lot of Native American history, especially with the Crow Nation. And then railroad history is a popular trade and distribution center that began in the 1880s. I got a chance to explore the city over three days and here are some of my favorite things to do in Billings, Montana. My first recommendation is to explore the Rim Rocks area of Billings. The Rim Rocks, also known as the Rims, are the craggy cliffs that surround the northeast side of Billings. You can access them from my favorite area on the Four Dances hike or you can go to the north side near the airport and explore from Zimmerman Park or bike from Swords Park. The Rim Rocks add a really distinct feature to Billings and they are beautiful to explore and provide some great views of the city down below you. Be sure to check out the Yellowstone Kelly interpretive site on the east side near Swords Park. Yellowstone Kelly was a really famous person in the history of Billings and the city even created an interpretive site where you can learn more about his life. Recommendation number two is also part of the Rim Rocks and that's a Four Dances hike. The Four Dances hike was my favorite thing I did while in Billings. The hike takes you along the eastern portion of the Rim Rocks and it looks down on the city and the river. The hike is especially great at sunset as it provides some amazing photo opportunities and it's one of the best views in the city. You can take the short hike directly to the viewpoint or the two mile long trail along the edge of the rim which is what we did. Also be sure to watch out for rattlesnakes in the summer because we saw one while we were on the trail. Recommendation number three is the Yellowstone Art Museum. The Yellowstone Art Museum is a popular attraction in downtown Billings that spotlights many of the state's famous artists. When we were there, there was a great collection of nature photography, sculptures, and a gallery where you could vote on your favorite piece from many young artists that submitted their work from all over the United States. I didn't know a lot about many of the artists myself, but I enjoyed walking around the museum and seeing all of the different galleries, and it's a great quick stop in the middle of the city. For my next recommendation, I'm combining both the Yellowstone County Museum and the Western Heritage Center. First up, the Yellowstone County Museum is located up on the hill near the airport and it focuses on the area's history. The museum is inside of a historic log cabin that was moved to its current location and that features over 5,000 square feet of exhibits. On the top floor, there's an exhibit on the policemen that have worked in Billings, and downstairs there's exhibits on Native American history and early Billings history. One of the highlights that many people want to see when they come here is the two-headed cow which was born to a local farmer and which is on display in the museum. On the other side of town sits the Western Heritage Center which is another great museum to see. In this museum there is exhibits on Native American artwork and on grizzly bears, however the main exhibit is on the bottom floor and it spotlights Ben Steele who was born in Montana, spent three years as a POW, and survived both the Bataan Death March and being less than 80 miles from Hiroshima when the atomic bomb dropped. When he returned home he did artwork on his time there and it's really sobering to read his stories and to see the work he did. It's not a very big museum but it's worth a quick stop while in the city. My next recommendation is to visit all the breweries in the city's brew tour. One of the best things about Billings for me is the brew tour that they have that goes through the middle of the city and features a bunch of local breweries. Breweries are a big thing here and you can visit over a half dozen of them on a 1.5 mile walking trail. We only got to four while we were in the city but it's a lot of fun to walk in and out of all the different ones and try their beers and other spirits. Some even had popcorn that you can eat and soft pretzels or nachos that you can buy. Spend a half day checking them out while in Billings. Much like breweries, Billings also has a strong coffee scene and my next recommendation is to visit the coffee shops. Amy and I love trying new coffee shops when we travel so we went to a bunch while in Billings. A few of our favorites were Moav which has a nice open space to work at and good lattes and Ebon Coffee Collective which was small but made their own syrups and had some great coffee. There are tons to check out all over the city though so be sure to try a few when you visit. Alright, for my next set of recommendations, we're going to be moving outside of the downtown area to visit some of the city's surrounding attractions. First up is Zoo Montana. Zoo Montana is the Billings Zoo and it's a popular spot for families as it has lots of play areas for children, animals to see, and costs less than $10 for adults. The zoo also has large enclosures for their animals and only features animals that live on the 45th parallel across the world so that they're used to the climate. We didn't see many animals out when we were there, but we saw a lot of families enjoying the area, so if you're traveling with a family, it's probably a good stop in the city. My next recommendation is a visit to Pictograph Cave State Park. 
Pictograph Cave State Park is on the outskirts of Billings and it's a great spot for a quick walk. The small state park has two main caves with cave paintings dating back over 2,000 years. There are a few short trails that take you up to the caves, but the art is hard to see since it had a lot of calcium buildup over the years. We were told the best time to see the art is after it rains when the area is a little wet, but it was still a cool spot to explore that was really beautiful and had lots of great photo opportunities. My next recommendation is Chief Plenty Coup State Park. Chief Plenty Coup was a famous Native American and head of the Crow Nation who had a large impact on the Billings area. There's a state park south of the city that spotlights the land that he lived on and then donated to the state park system. Visiting it lets you learn a lot more about Native American history in the area as well as allowing you to visit his home that he built on the property. His story is a truly amazing one that I recommend you read about online and if you're visiting Billings it's definitely worth driving out to see this park. My next recommendation is Little Bighorn Battlefield National Monument. If you're into history then you definitely need to make the drive one hour east of Billings to Little Bighorn Battlefield National Monument. This is where the Battle of Little Bighorn happened in 1876, and the property now includes memorials to both the cavalry and the Native American soldiers that were lost in the battle. There are exhibits to see in the gift shop, a video you can watch, and an audio tour you can go on to visit some of the important sites in the battle. Also note that when you leave the park there's a trading post right across the street and has some of the best Indian fry bread I've ever had. I highly recommend you stop there and try it before heading back to Billings. My last recommendation before talking about food is to visit Pompey's Pillar. Pompey's Pillar sits 30 minutes east of Billings and it's famous because it was a rock that William Clark from Lewis and Clark scratched his name in. This is one of the only places along the entire Lewis and Clark route that actually has something from the famous explorers that you can still see. The visitor center does a great job talking about Lewis and Clark's journey and the short hike to the rock provides beautiful views of the surrounding area. The rock became famous and there's many other names on it because of Lewis and Clark's journey and people who are heading west wanted to stop and carve their name as well. It's worth the drive from Billings to see something so historic and the area surrounding it is really pretty to see. Alright, for my last recommendation I'm just going to share some of my favorite food spots in Billings. First up, stop by Sassy Biscuit for a great breakfast with unique dishes and lots of fun options. It's popular on the weekends but it's worth the wait. For lunch, I love the Burger Dive. It has really interesting burger combinations and it's definitely worth a try. Be sure to get there early on a weekday though as it fills up fast for lunch and for dinner. For dessert, I love Big Dipper Ice Cream in downtown as they have lots of revolving flavors and it's always fun to see what's on the board and try the different options. Lastly for dinner I have two recommendations. First up the Montana Brewing Company which is a popular spot with good bar food and lots of beer. I personally like the gigantic pretzel or the deep fried enchilada bites. However my favorite spot in the city for food is probably the field house. They have some killer dishes with well thought out flavor combinations and we went twice while we were in Billings. I don't normally like meatloaf but the meatloaf sandwich here came highly recommended and that's what I got and I'm glad that I did. It's a fantastic sandwich but make sure you also order the brussels sprouts as an appetizer. Thanks for exploring Billings, Montana with me. Hopefully you found a new spot to check out next time you're in the area. Let me know if I left off your favorite spot in the comments and we'll see you on the next video.